Hi everyone, we're the Strong and Chatty Chicks and we chat about things related to women's health and fitness. Nothing is off the table and if it matters to you, then it matters to us. My name is Paula Headley and I have 20 years experience as a medical scientist and I'm a public health expert. I am Yvonne Alonso. I am a personal trainer of 17 years and a plant-based nutritionist. Today we're going to be talking about training during pregnancy in response to a question we got on Instagram. That's right. I think most of us know that we are pretty strong. The female body is very strong. For generations, women have been working out in fields. They've been carrying water, like while pregnant, while pregnant and carrying groceries in one arm and carrying another child in the other. Yeah. I mean, our bodies are so incredible. We can create an entire human and then give birth to them and then care for it. And somehow there is this myth has been kind of built up around pregnancy that your body is somehow vulnerable and you need to sit down and do more or less nothing Yes, for nine months. And that's absolutely bullshit. It is. In preparation for this, I was looking for the guidelines worldwide. There is not one, not one that recommends that pregnant women who are healthy should start working out. And that makes absolute sense. Yeah. I mean, I have trained many pregnant women throughout my career as a personal trainer um, some of them have been, for example, runners who enjoy running. They fell pregnant and some of them continue to run up until their eighth month. But that's amazing. And I, I think I saw recently a CrossFit competitor, yeah. like working out. Yes. While pregnant. I mean, she was so strong. Absolutely. I know that people on social media and, and people who have these big accounts, they get quite a lot of hate for this, mm -hmm. which it makes me so angry. Yes. You know, that particular woman in, in this case was obviously a professional CrossFitter. Mm -hmm. She was phenomenal. You could see by looking at her that she was doing great. She was clearly healthy. She was clearly working out within her limits. Women are of course vulnerable with, when they're pregnant and awful things do happen miscarriages do happen mm -hmm. um not all pregnancies come to a happy ending mm -hmm. um and i don't know if it's just that there is just a broad societal fear that that should happen to a pregnant woman and so you want to wrap her in bubble wrap and and you want to keep her in a corner and, and just you know make sure she doesn't experience anything but sitting in her corner mm -hmm. but that is just not the truth for the majority of pregnant women particularly in a place where you can receive appropriate prenatal care where you get you know your screenings done you get your scans done you know that you're healthy you know that your pregnancy is, pro is progressing normally you should be able to do the things that your body actually enjoys doing absolutely and i mean as i said i've trained so many pregnant women of course these women have been training previously yeah um so they already were quite strong they yeah. were intermediate lifters um, yeah. they've been training for at least a year or two, maybe three years under have their belt. Have you ever had a client come to you newly pregnant? No, I have not had someone that I've never worked with before. As we discussed before, like it is okay to start working out when you find out you're pregnant. Yeah. Because just like in any other situation, you would never start with a hundred kilo deadlift. No. You would start at the beginning. You would start from yeah. just the basics just moving your body, learning some technique yeah. and just moving your body in a way that feels good. And actually doing it in like a class setting or in a gym with a trainer who can lead you safely through that process would be the logical way of doing that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, that's why I see a lot of yoga for yeah. pregnant women yeah. and or Pilates for pregnant women. And that's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, I think if you enjoy moving that way, then you should do it. Yeah. And also you feel safer. Someone's keeping an eye on you and you meet other women who are also pregnant and looking yeah. forward to having their baby. And that's a great part of working out the social yeah, aspect. That's true. But if you want to start doing something and you're pregnant, then it shouldn't be limited to just a walk and gentle yoga if that's not what you want to do yeah. you can start just in a modified form yeah yeah if you're a complete novice absolutely yeah i think currently the guidelines are pretty much the same as they are for anybody else mm -hmm. so you know you're recommended to move your know, 30 minutes a day you know a moderate way mm -hmm. and to do some kind of resistance training and it's good for your baby it's good for your baby. It also, I think it's good for your health, which is good for the pregnancy health. I think that the purpose of moving continuously throughout your life and throughout different 
stages of your life are to ensure that you are strong and that your body is resilient to all kind of challenges. Delivering a baby is a big challenge, you know, and I mean, neither of us have, have given birth. So mm-hmm. we're, we're saying this as people who haven't experienced it personally, but I was present for a birth where I was observing and I work within pregnancy screening. So I was sent to the hospital to, to see what the process was. Uh, and I got to watch this woman deliver, which was an in, incredible privilege. But the work that her body had to go through to deliver this baby was tremendous. The act of pushing required like three other people to support her. Oh my goodness. This is a big, big deal. And the more your body is ready to do a hard thing, Mm -hmm. the easier you're going to find it mentally. Not necessarily physically, you're still going to do the work, but you are mentally going to be better prepared. In my experience, the women who have fallen pregnant and continue their workouts, they had no underlying conditions, they were healthy, they were able to leg press and bench press and do yeah. all these things all the way up to very close to their PRs. Yeah. Pretty much until they were ready to deliver. Yeah. Right. We were always very careful. We were always very mindful. Um, yeah. I mean, you, you want to be aware to that body. obviously as your belly gets bigger. Yeah. You modify. You're right? going to have to your modify. Center of, your center of gravity is different. Yeah. You're going to feel like you're toppling over. Yeah. So you're going to have to adapt. You're going to have yes. to adapt to this new reality. And, and while you're pregnant, that you're going to have to continuously adapt because that is continuously absolutely changing absolutely and that's i guess that's part of the fun of yeah. it right <laughs> but i mean once they delivered and they had fortunately they had great experiences yes. and i mean in the sense of where of course it was super hard and i can i can't even imagine how yeah. hard it is to deliver a baby but they bounced back yeah. so quickly in some of the cases they were telling me that they were able to stand almost immediately after giving birth. Oh, that's they incredible. felt strong. Yeah. Apparently that's not completely normal no. that most women feel that they can walk and everything right no. afterwards. Yeah. But I've had more than a few clients that experienced that. That that was their experience. Yeah, that was their experience that they felt really strong afterwards. And then a couple of them, when they felt pregnant again, maybe at that point they hadn't continued working out as much no because looking after a baby is hard working it working after yeah exactly looking after a baby is hard work life everything and then i remember them telling me that the second uh delivery was a completely different story okay. you know that they felt oh, that it was much harder oh because they had kind of lapsed in their training maybe yeah oh that's really that's... interesting the typical story is that second and subsequent pregnancies are a little bit easier yeah i think that there is a case for like whatever stage in your life you're in you should try to move in a way that you are able to do so consistently is something that you enjoy doing, which help with that consistency. Mm-hmm. And then obviously you should be taking account of how your body feels. And, you know, we've spoken about cyclical fitness and that is a routine within your cycle of checking in with your body. How does your body feel? How should we then adapt our workout to make sure that we can consistently move throughout our cycle? Yeah. And this is kind of a continuation of that. Now that you're pregnant, you, of course, don't have that cycle, mm-hmm. but your body is changing day to day, week to week. Yes. And you should be cognizant of your center of balance is going to change. Mm-hmm. The, the laxity of your joints is, is going to change and you yes. need to be aware of those things. That is a really good point. You know, so these things in your body. So you need to be checking in like we as women at every stage in our life need to be looking in and saying, okay, how do I feel today? Yeah. You know, and this is an extension of that. It, it, you know, there, this, the advice that you should stop moving because you're pregnant is not medical advice. It's Mm-mm. not advice that you're going to get from your doctor unless you have a condition. So when your grandma is telling you that you should just sit at home and that you shouldn't stress yourself, you know, don't lift that box, don't carry your own shopping. You should be doing the things that you can do because Ultimately, when you're pregnant with your second baby, your first baby does not give a shit no. <laughs> that you shouldn't be carrying anything. You still need to carry that baby. You still need to do all of those things. And now suddenly people are looking at you like, well, you're a bad mom. Yeah. You just can't you can't win. You cannot win. You know, no so, matter what you no. do, because then you do too much. And that's probably why you yeah. had a miscarriage, right? Yeah. They will blame you. It, it's madness. I mean, it's I've important. even heard, like we discussed earlier, that they blame some women for eating chili and having a miscarriage. Yeah, it's like, how like, is that even? Yeah. Miscarriage is, is an awful, awful thing. It happens to a lot of people. Yeah. We often don't know why it happens, but it is not something that you, the pregnant woman, has caused. No. 
No, it isn't. It's a terrible tragedy. It's something that you know, you should have the opportunity to grieve with, with your, mm -hmm. your partner, with your family. You have had an awful loss. Yes. And for people in social media and online spaces to weaponize that loss and to kind of make it about this woman and her choices, mm -hmm. no. No, it's egregious. If you are a pregnant woman and you're unsure, speak to your doctor. Yes. They will be able to assess you and say, okay, well, you don't have any conditions which would preclude you from working out. Carry on. You know, let your doctor know what it is that you do and at what level that you do it so that they can maybe keep an eye on you. But you should not be mm -mm. fear mongered to by people who don't know you. In a lot of cases, it's a cultural thing, right? Now, yeah. I come from the Latino culture, which can be quite old school sometimes. Yeah. And throughout my entire childhood, when a woman felt pregnant, it was always like, oh, she needs bed rest. She needs to not be stressed and she needs bed rest. I mean, I appreciate not stressing the woman out. Yeah. But you're not sick. Yeah. You're not ill. If you have a condition which would prevent you from, from working out, or which, then of course you should take medical advice. You know, in, in Denmark, you have two screens and I think you can get mm -hmm. a third if there's, if there's some kind of consequence. Yeah. So you, you kind of touch base with the medical professionals. And if you feel like you need to be supervised while you're training, mm. then contact a trainer who knows about has some experience. Yeah, has experience with pre and post natal yeah. uh, training. Absolutely. And then another side note, mm -hmm. we talked about the myth of eating for two. Oh yes. Right? Because growing up, that's what I heard all the time. Yeah, Every time there was a pregnant woman, there's like, oh, she's eating for two, give which her more. Is, which sounds great. Yeah, but... it, I mean, it does, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, I, I love to eat. But, but no, your baby is not a whole adult. Exactly. In fact, for a very long time, it's a teeny, tiny, yeah. tiny, tiny thing. And it doesn't need that much calories. No, exactly. No. But you should, of course, you will gain weight. And that's very normal. And that's yeah. very healthy. Yes. Right? You like, should be gaining weight. Yeah. What you shouldn't be doing is gaining excess weight. So exactly. there is a risk associated with gaining excess weight during pregnancy. And that includes gestational diabetes or preeclampsia or uh, gestational hypertension. Mm -hmm. And these are things that you really do want to avoid. So yeah. which, again, moving is going to help you to avoid those things. Absolutely. So, you know, like these things tie together, just like at the rest of your life and all other points in your life, you want to be nourishing yourself adequately and you want to be moving appropriately. When you are pregnant, you want to be nourishing yourself adequately and you want to be moving appropriately. Yeah. You know, so again, it's checking with your body. Absolutely. You know, like check in with your body. And check in with your doctor. Your needs during pregnancy, they don't change. Not that, that dramatically. Much. Not so dramatically. No. As people think. No. And I mean... Your activity level goes close to zero and then your food intake just rises. Yeah. The double. Yeah. Which right? puts you at terrible risk of, of these Absolutely. things we're just speaking about. Think that getting gestational diabetes, it isn't just a risk for your pregnancy. It's also a risk long term because it's associated with other lifestyle conditions later on. So you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're more likely to develop heart disease. You're more likely to develop uh, type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. So it, it is really important that you are aware of what your needs actually are and that you are meeting them appropriately and not overshooting yes you know like you said don't sit for nine months and just eat all the cake yeah i mean eat the cake yeah but don't eat all the cake no moderation is, is key yes. you're the moderation that yourself. you exercise when you're not pregnant it's the same moderation that you should exercise when you're pregnant yeah. right yeah you're eat not for yourself you're not sick yeah you know we were we were flipping through um the book Roar mm. by Dr. Stacy Sims. Sims yeah. Like definitely people check her out. She's cool. She says herself that a hundred calories in your first trimester, yeah. an extra hundred calories in your first trimester, and then 300 calories in your second and third. Second and, third. and I mean, you're, and that's not a lot if it's you not think a, about it. I mean, that's a couple you, of snacks. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, in a kind of a hundred calories, like the point is that during your pregnancy, you will be feeling a little bit different. So during that first trimester, you might actually be feeling quite sick. It's more common to have kind of morning sickness in your yes. first trimester. So then you might need to be quite aware that you are eating appropriately Please. because you might be vomiting quite a yes. lot. Or you might just feel unwell and not want to eat. So it's also yeah. important at that time that you're aware that you're getting your calories in, mm -hmm. even if you're feeling unwell. And if you're feeling extremely unwell and you can't eat at all, it really is important that you, 
you speak to your doctor. doctor. It's very common to feel unwell. It's not very common to need to speak to somebody. But if you no. do need to, you absolutely it does happen. should. Because I've had a you couple of friends who have had to be hospitalized yeah. because they just simply couldn't hold anything down. Yeah. And, and they so, were losing weight instead of gaining weight, yes. right? And that's, that's really... Fortunately, nice. that's not as common. No, right? that's not as common. But you do need to be aware that yeah. that does happen. Yeah. Um, and that you do want to make sure that you are getting the calories that you need even though Absolutely. you're not feeling very well. Move as frequently as you are comfortable Yeah, in a way that you enjoy. And yes. that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to be going to CrossFit every day. Obviously, mm -hmm. that might not be appropriate for you. If you're currently doing 20-minute, 30-minute walk every day, you can easily continue doing that. Yeah, There's nothing to stop you from continuing doing that thing that you enjoy. And if you're going to gym once or twice a week, great, keep doing that. Absolutely. You know, like you can continue to do those things. But what you maybe should be aware of is that if you are completely sedentary and you want to get started, to start small mm -hmm. in the same way that you would if you weren't pregnant. Yes. And build and up build. It, it can a nice, easy pace so that mm -hmm. you're never too stressed, that it, you feel like it's something you don't want to continue. And at the same time, it's something that you know, your body is getting deriving benefit from. So start small. And build. And build. Baby steps. Baby steps. For the baby. Trust your body. Trust your doctor. Check in with yourself. Move in a way that you enjoy for as long as you can. Absolutely. And enjoy that your baby's on its way. Yeah. To an active mama. To an active mama. Thanks for listening. Please like, share, follow, and subscribe to the podcast on Spotify and YouTube. And follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Strong Chatty Chicks. Stay strong. Stay chatty.